I can help you go from this image to this image in just three steps. HDRI stands for High Dynamic Range Images. So how are these images actually incorporated in Enscape? We're going to take a look at that right now. But before we do, I just want to give you a quick example of how that works. Imagine the actual environment of the Enscape scene as a sphere. And now imagine that you're just taking that HDRI and applying it to that sphere. And now your whole model is surrounded by the HDRI that you put in. HDRIs are taken in the real world and this is a wonderful thing because this means that when we use them they actually take lighting sources from real life scenarios so that's really the base of it and that fact is enough for me to believe that it's more realistic rather than a default enscape sky so one of the best places to get hris is polyhaven.com i'm not sponsored by them or i'm not affiliated with them in any way but right here you can see that they do have a good variety amount of hris that you can choose from there's some that have obviously buildings on site which can also help for backgrounds but there's some that only used for lighting sources and all of that over here we have different categories that we can choose from which have natural light midday nighttime skies artificial light and different type of skies as well so let's say i want to download this field right here i would first have to go at this section and make sure you don't have the exr file type selected but you would rather want the hdr file selected and then we can just click download so i do have a an Enscape file that I have set up right here. I do have a video of how I created the stranger all step by step. Make sure you click the pop up in the video right here. But if you actually want to apply an HDRI to this actual image, it's actually very simple. So the first step is you want to go to the visual settings. You want to go add the sky part and then add the source. You have to choose skybox. Once you have chosen that, you can go load skybox from file. And once I click it, I go ahead and find the location where I downloaded the HDRI and I just select the HDRI, I apply it. And then in just a second, you can see that the HDRI and the whole lighting set of change for this actual render the sky isn't the same anymore and it just has a whole different feel to it so now there's a few things that we can do so firstly usually the brightest point at sun direction is not selected as default but i always suggest you to make this as default because it actually matches the sun direction with the whole lighting setup of the hdri as well and just makes the image a whole lot more uh, natural so i'm just going to click this make sure you have this ticked up and then if you want to rotate the sun direction or the look of the clouds and all that you can just use this slider right here so as you can see as i'm changing the position of the slider you can see that the shadows are moving and the whole sun direction is moving as well together uh, as we're moving the sun. So another thing that you have to take a look at is this brightness slider. So this basically says the exposure value of the actual HDRI. One interesting fact though is that the more you actually turn up the brightness of the HDRI, the less you can actually see the intensity of the sun. So I'm just gonna take this to default. And then as you can see, as I lower the brightness, the more we're going to be able to see the intensity of the sun. So make sure you kind of find a good balance between the brightness of the HDRI and the sun intensity. One thing about HDRIs is that the main way they actually affect the image is that the renders reflect a lot of the colors that the HDRI has. So we can choose two different HDRIs and I will show you the difference in the screen right now how they will be different to one another. So I'm going to place the HDRI with another one which also has a city in the background and uh, as you can see right now it has a whole different look. It also has a different type of reflection on on the actual windows it also has some background and all that but you can definitely see the difference between that one and this one if you actually want to see the difference even more we can go ahead at the polyhaven website that we had earlier i'm going to choose the azure eyes uh, version right here i'm going to choose a different type of sunset so let's say i want to try this one which is like the dawn sunset yeah, you can see how these colors will actually reflect onto the actual uh, look of the render. So once that is downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and upload it into the HDRI that we have here. And now you can see the huge difference that it has and the huge impact that it has on our uh, render that we have here. So one thing you also have to keep in mind with HDRIs is that you cannot resize them once they're inside Enscape and you also cannot change the height of them so always make sure that you look out for any tall objects or tall buildings that can actually interrupt or make your image look worse which can actually interfere with the background that you're trying to have in your image so when it comes to picking the right hri for me it comes down to two things so i always like to keep kind of neutral 
age your eyes, but this also can depend on the mood or the picture that you want to. But I myself try to pick age your eyes that do not have too many clouds and kind of have neutral colors so they don't emit too much purple colors or like a purple sky as we have here and instead just emit something uh, much clearer like another option that we have right here. I myself have went through quite a few age eyes testing them out but as of now I use three main ones. Once you test them out you will find your main ones that you're just going to switch from project to project and you don't have to find a new one every time you start a new project. Now these are kind of the basics of age eyes but if you want to learn more about age eye images and how you can get better looking exterior renders and lighting overall in your spaces, make sure to join the Enscape Expert program in the link in the description. Now the HDRI that you're using can have a big effect on the interior renders as well. Now a lot of people don't expect this but what happens is the kind of HDRIs you have on the outside the interior materials will actually reflect a lot of those colors. So right here, I have another HRI that is kind of more neutral, a little bit cloudy, and it's just very plain. And right now I'm gonna replace it with another HRI, which you're going to see the difference of in just uh, one minute. So for example, let's choose this one, and then I'm going to choose another one as well. So for example, the one that we had earlier on the exterior. And as you can see, all of these do have a different look. So make sure you always use this for interior as well. Now, this is only one one of the ways you can improve your interior lighting but if you want to learn more about interior lighting make sure to watch this video right here